Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and welcome to the Uranian system as today we're going to be continuing on from our recent Jupiter and Saturn uh, videos and we're going to be turning Uranus into a star. So Uranus has a lot of close by moons, all of the inner moons like Cordelia, Ophelia here for instance, I don't think they're going to last. I think we're mainly going to be focusing on the moons further out, probably maybe Oberon maybe our best bet of anything that could potentially have decent temperatures because all of the moons of uranus are you know compared to the planet they're at a decent distance also you have the really far away stuff but they're all just asteroid moons so you know which moons will survive if this becomes a star i don't think moons like you know Ariel, which are fairly close by i don't think they're gonna stand a chance so without further ado everybody let's get this started so we need to first of all slow down time so the uh, object doesn't just pull all the moons in, as we're going to have to do a reset at some point, so the moons don't get pulled in at all. Um, right, so here we are. The rings of the planet are there at the moment as well. I don't think they're going to last. So, Uranus. Currently at 14.5 Earth masses. The radius is just under 4 Earths. But we need to make this thing a lot bigger. So, let's do this. Okay, everyone. Five masses of Earth ready to go. I'm going to launch it into Uranus in a subsequent blast. So hopefully it doesn't uh, make the thing too crazy big. There you go. So it's already engulfing moons straight away as soon as we make it larger. Oh, yes. Okay. And that's as expected. I mean, these moons are very close. Let's slow down time quite a lot. Hopefully we can keep some of them, but I don't think they're going to last too long. So there we go. So we need to spray that material in there slowly but surely. Let it all go in. It's going to obviously pull in stuff pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and uh, speed up it as best we can. As soon as those blobs go in, it's going to get bigger. Oh, yeah. So slowly but surely, we're getting there. See, I don't think... Uh, Ariel, Miranda, I don't think those moons are going to be doing very good. Let's increase the speed of this stuff so it's just going in quicker. There we go. 0 0.3 Jupiters. We've still got a long way to go. Before this thing really gets there. So there we go. Let's continue. Let's make the mass. Let's double up the mass. Make it bigger. 20 Earths per thing. Yeah, look, the inner moons are not going to not gonna last. You can see, look, Puck there. That's going in. Miranda, very endangered right now. I don't even think Ariel, the first of the bigger moons, is going to do too well here. So there we go. Let's continue. 40 massive Earth. Let's increase the velocity of this stuff as well. Let's go ahead and quick. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's... Oh, dear. Yes, okay. Right, let's continue. Just a bigger blast now. Let's just shoot a huge amount of material in there. There you go. All falling in. Slowly but surely. A bit more. There you go. And this thing is going to pop really large, I think, when this all goes in. All that extra hydrogen. There you go. Making it a true gas giant at this point, adding all this extra mass. There it is. 21 Jupiters. Aerial. Very close to going in now. Let's continue. Again, more material. We're only at 10 seconds of time here. This stuff is flying in quick. Again, let's shoot more. Double the speed, that one. Eventually. So we're at 21 Jupiter masses. We still need probably another 60. So let's uh, double our mass up to 80 Earths. So mass is 0.2 Jupiters of mass now. Oh, oh yeah. That's going to really uh, things. Make things quick. Let's go high high velocity speed there. There you go. Let all that fall in here. There it is. 28 Jupiters of mass now. I think the inner moons have gone, haven't they? Aerial. No, Aerial's still hanging on. Okay. We've lost Miranda, though. The first of the more major moons. That's gone. Okay. Let's continue. More hydrogen. Get this star. Let's get this star going. Oh, it's slowly shrinking in size a bit. I think the densities doesn't like that, does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's slight, slightly decreasing. Still falling in 70 jam masses. Okay, a little bit more. We should start to see this become a brown dwarf. It's warming up. Look, zero. Yeah, there you go. So it is slowly warming up. And there you go. Right, that's now a star. There you are. It just needs a bit more temperature. So we'll go ahead and do that manually. So let's get it going. Warm it up a bit. There you go. Okay, and what I'll do is, for comparison, I will pull it with a similar conditions to the dim stars. So we'll go with... Uh, let's use Trappist one. That's always a good um, reference point. Where are we, Trappist? Uh, where are we? Trappist 1. So let me just place that far away. I just want to compare them, the uh, luminosity. So I'm just going to place Trappist 1 all the way over here. Simulation's paused. So Trappist 1 is that value there. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that in Uranus's luminosity gauge. So given it a very dim red dwarf kind of appearance, let's place that in there. There you go. So that is now the luminosity of Trappist 1. Roughly. Temperature wise, how hot does it need to go? 20, about 2600 Kelvin. Okay. So there it is, Uranus. Let's delete those excess particles. Um, temperature needs to be a little warmer. Slowly increasing the velocity as well. There you go. So about 2700. There you go. So Uranus is now 
Full on star. 80 Jupiter masses. So, the moons. They're going to start warming up. So, what we're going to do is... Obviously, we're going to need to auto orbit this stuff. Because otherwise, it's all going to uh, fall into the planet. So, can I do it all in one go? Let's see. Uh, is there a way to auto orbit them? I don't know if there is. Okay, we may have to do the full set of stuff. There's only 14 moons, actually. I can just do it manually. Right, so... Let's go ahead and pause. So labels are on to aerial. First of the objects here. Motion. Auto orbit, please. There you go. So that's one. Unfortunately, they're not going to have their tilted orbits anymore. But there's not much we can really do about that unless we really uh, do it. So they're going to have a bit of funky orbits. I mean, maybe I can try and fix them. So that's the main moons. Then over here, it's all of the uh, minor objects. So there you go. So it's the only way we can keep them in orbit without them being pulled in. Because, I mean, that is a lot of mass that's about to pull them in. Otherwise, we do have to do this. So there you go. Ferdinand's the furthest moon of Uranus. There you go. So, viewing all the way from... A, oh, there's one more. Viewing all the way from Ferdinand here. That's everyone, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So, here it is. And there you go. Receiving light from a whole new star now. There you go. Turn the goggles off. What are we seeing? There it is. The Uranus star. There you go. Got the sun in the other distance over there. Between two stars. But Uranus now much more visible. So, what we all want to see, though, is how the moons, the larger moons, survive being in this kind of orbit. So let's go ahead and press play. Speed up time a bit. Let's go. So actually, we can. Um, the orbits won't be too messed up, actually. We can just go ahead and do the um, inclination. There you go. So roughly try and put them the way they were before. We'll do it for the major moons anyway. So tilt them on their sides. There you go. That's, that's something, at least. Roughly fix the Uranian systems where it was. Okay, there you go. Not too bad. Umbriel maybe is just slightly out of position there. All right, we just need to quickly do that. There you go. Umbriel. Ooh. It's even quite the temperature on one side. Look at that temperature. What's that? What's that all about? Is that because I moved it? I'm not sure that's quite right. That will settle down a bit. Let me just put it back to zero just to settle it. I'm not sure what happened there. Aerial, though. Not looking good. 200 degrees Celsius already. And it looks like it's being shredded. <laughs> oh, dear. And for a dramatic effect, we can always add a nice sort of ring particle around it as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So, one to say three, maybe. I like adding those. Uh, Saturn. No, no, I want the Saturn clouds. That's it. Let's go over about uh, two, two, four. Add the ring. Yeah, it looks cool like that. There you go. Add two sets of it. Why not? Nice. Maybe just a bit of manual intervention, but I'm just going to rotate it the right way around so it's roughly in line with the moon orbits. So, kind of keep that traditional Uranus look going on. There you go. Right, now, play. Now, let's really speed up time. Let's watch the moon. So, Ariel, the first of the moons here. Very threatened from losing material here. Is it too close to the Roosh limit of this new Uranus? I mean, it's quite close to that star. And this is in mere minutes. We haven't really even had, like, days yet of time pass. Umbriel, also a world not looking good. Losing a lot of mass and material being near that enormous star now. There you go. Oberon, the furthest of the moons, minus 210 Celsius. How are we doing over here? And again, it's not looking good. I think one of them's in a retro. I think we put someone in the retrograde orbits. Oh, well. Still gives us the same effect. So there you go. Oh, yeah, they are going around the wrong way. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, really dear indeed. That is, uh... That's not good. There you go. And I think... The other moons have disintegrated. Yeah, they have. Oberon's the only one left. <laughs> there, you can see the particles of what used to be the moons, but they have been absolutely shredded. Oh dear. Well, Oberon's the last moon anyway, so <laughs> retrograde orbits didn't really matter. Right, so how hot will Oberon get is the question, and it's the only moon, yeah, only, only surviving of the major moons. There you go. Let's go and have a little, uh, little look on the surface of Oberon here. Okay, here we are. And that is your, that is just, that is your new star. So it's going to be coming around pretty quick. Where are we? There it is. Yep. Oh, yes. Where are we? Aha! There you go. You can see, oh, it's shooting out flares as well. Oh, yeah. There you go. And all those particles technically would build a new ring as well, so we were not wrong when adding that ring. So there it is. Now, new star. Turn the goggles off, and that's what you get. Oh, yeah. It does look good, doesn't it? Got the regular sun in the background. <laughs> There you go, okay. So looking at the uh the uranium star there. Quite the uh quite the masterpiece now. <laughs> there it is. Turn the 
goggles on. There you go. So. Doesn't look like it's gone well for a lot of the planets, has it? Oh, a lot of the moons, sorry. We've only one surviving. The outer moons are so far away, they probably won't even receive temperature. There's your zone. I mean, it's a red dwarf, so it doesn't have a bright zone anyway. So these these um, these um outer asteroid moons are not going to have anything at all. And it looks like... It looks like Oberon has succumbed to the mass as well. And it's also been torn apart by tidal forces. So all of the Uranium major moons have been destroyed. There is not a single hope for any object around the Uranian star. So there you go. And that is everything. It's completely destroyed them all. So the next furthest moon over here. Uh, Francisco here. That's your next object out. And it is by far too far away to receive any sort of temperature. So there it is. It's way out of the Hatable zone. There you go. Look at that. So now you're orbiting. Nice new warm star. But, you know, still not receiving much temperature. The star is too dim to really give us anything. So you can see the remains of the moons are building a ring eventually there as well. An outer ring. There you go. So a very terrifying fate for the Uranian moons. So there you are. So now we hope. Let's go ahead and delete the particles so everything can run a little more smoothly. Speed up time, as of now we now have to see what happens to the rest of the solar system. With having a brand new star, 84 Jupiter mass, that's going to cause turmoil in the uh, with the trans-Neptunian objects, my guess. It may even upset Saturn's orbit, Neptune's orbit, I think it's definitely going to have some problems. So let's go ahead and speed up time and watch as this party plays out. So we can already see it's pulling in outer objects. The system is completely unstable in the outer regions now, having that bonus star. All objects, I mean, hopefully everything up to Jupiter should be okay. The inner solar system, the sun is still the dominant object of mass in that region. But Uranus pulling on the outer objects, you can see the orbit between Neptune and Uranus is changing. But will Saturn hold on is the question. I don't think it will. I think the tug of that 84 masses would still cause major problems to Saturn. So it's getting close to Jupiter now. Again, that's going to cause, that could cause problems. If Saturn gets slung in the wrong direction, that could upset the inner solar system. Let's continue. Watch as that Uranus star goes round. Look at the car. It upset Saturn there. Yeah, it is pulling on Saturn. Neptune as well being pulled around. Not good. It's picking up new objects as well. Look, you can see it. Oh, it's tugged Saturn away. Look at that. Saturn's orbiting there. Now Saturn's going towards the inner solar system, which would upset the asteroid belt. Yeah, it's going right in the asteroid belt region. So that will cause absolute turmoil there. It's also going to be having problems with Jupiter in the region as well. So Saturn is now in a really, really dangerous position. Being close to Jupiter, so Jupiter's just slung it out. Now it's been pulled back out to Uranus again, so Uranus has just slung it around as well. Poor old Saturn's not catching a break here. So the whole Saturnian system has also been absolutely destroyed by uh, Uranus becoming a star here. It's going by Uranus again. Is it going to survive? Ooh, it's hanging on in there, but not a good look. The outer objects further away. I mean, there's no hope for those after a long period of time. Let's continue. Now I reckon eventually we're going to see Saturn ejected here. Potentially Neptune as well. Not looking good. Saturn holding on in there, but it's not a good look. There it is, being slung around. Pluto being affected as well, with the purple orbit there. Saturn's orbit now slings the inner solar system, and that is a huge problem. Look at that, cutting right in that asteroid belt area there as well. We can view, uh, go and view Earth. Currently at 7 degrees, currently still in the good position. But, you know, that could really change if Saturn has a massive interaction in that system. There you go. Jupiter hanging on in there quite nicely. I think we've lost Neptune. I think Neptune's orbit's gone. Jupiter, yeah, doing well. Just because it's so close to the sun, it can hold on quite nicely. But I think everything between Jupiter and Uranus is eventually going to go. Oh dear. Saturn, yeah. The middle object. No longer needed by the solar system to keep the inner system stable, I guess. It's just completely got rid of them. So what's going on over here? So Neptune, gone. First of the objects ejected was the planet. Yeah, okay. They only have a large mass object. So now the uh, Kuiper belt. The... the unstableness as well. Saturn has also been slung out to very far distances, almost out to Sedna distances there. All of the Kuiper objects, absolute chaos. But everything Jupiter inwards is doing all right. I mean, Earth, 7 degrees Celsius, nice average there. Doing pretty good. The whole of the inner system, despite Saturn trying to get in there, um, it's managed to get away unscathed in this experiment. A very, very interesting turn of events. Okay, there you are. And Uranus, the star, just doing, uh, doing what it does best. There it is. Interacting with Saturn once more. There you go. Okay, let's speed up time as much as we can go. There you are, so Earth's still doing well. Yeah. 
Seems like, um, yeah, you're, that Uranus orbit's never going to be affected by Jupiter, and vice versa. I think Jupiter's okay being close to the Sun here. So those two are doing okay. Is there everything else in between? I think after a long period of time, Saturn and Neverty will be ejected. The outer Kuiper objects, they may hold on for a bit, but I think Uranus eventually will swipe them out. There you go, so Saturn's orbit's still not, it's still trying to fight Saturn. It's now getting slung inwards again. Interaction with Uranus, I think that has got rid of Saturn for good, is it? it ooh, maybe, I think Saturn's hanging on in there. Almost. Very, very close to being ejected. But yeah, Saturn is definitely not meant for this system anymore. But yeah, I'm surprised that the inner solar system yeah, are doing quite nicely. But I mean, yeah, again, the sun is so is so much closer to the sun. I mean, Uranus is all of the inner planets and sat out to Saturn's distance doubled in distance. So everything up to Jupiter, the sun is still by far the superior object with the uh, gravitational pull. So Uranus has no effect on those guys. But poor old Saturn being in between, right in the middle, having that Uranus star. It's definitely uh, definitely caused some turmoil out there. But yeah, there we are, everybody. So that is what happens if Uranus becomes a star. Destroys its moons, the Rouge limit. All the Uranian moons are too close to Uranus to um, survive. The Rouge limit, the gravitational power of Uranus is way too much. Tears the moons, completely dishreds. The outer moons, they stay cold. They're too far away from the uh, habitable zone of the new star. And then the planets themselves... Neptune's ejected. The Kuiper Belt objects all fast past uh, Neptune. They're all unstable. Saturn's orbit has also been upset. But other than that, the inner solar system and Jupiter, business as usual. Probably be a lot more objects being slung in the inner solar system, though. Little asteroids and comets and stuff. But other than that, the planets themselves, their orbits are doing okay. Inner system's unaffected in this situation. Because if it went differently, I'm pretty sure Saturn would. If Saturn was slung in there slightly differently, it probably could have caused more problems. But there we go. So we're going to leave it there, everyone. And Saturn is... I think... Oh, yeah, Saturn has gone. As we're finishing the video here. That is the end of Saturn. I don't think it's coming back. It is. Yeah, that's, that's had it, hasn't it? I doubt that's uh, having much of a return after that. So, yeah, Saturn inevitably is gone. Yeah, it's all that's not even... Uh... Oh, yeah, that's just carnage, isn't it? But yeah, there we are, everybody. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, press that like button and subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. We're getting nearer and nearer by the day. Really appreciate all your support. Yeah, less than 1,000 people. Let's do this. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe. Help us on the journey to that. Um, also, leave a like. Let's even go for 100 likes on today's video, everybody. And with that all said and done, make sure you stay safe. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.